but the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject of vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same, in hope, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. But we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of our body. When the Most High gave Adam the laws of the garden, one of the first laws the Most High decreed was for Adam to take care of the garden. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. The Most High commanded Adam and Eve to rule over everything by giving them dominion over the earth. In addition to dominion, the Most High made all of his creation in the lower places subject to Adam. Whatever name Adam gave the animals, that was its name. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air, and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. When Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, they were kicked out of the garden. The Bible confirmed they were driven out of the garden and other books that give an account about Adam and Eve's journey said the Most High removed them from the garden. The Garden of Eden was Adam and Eve's first home. Once they sinned by transgressing the laws of the Most High, everything changed for all of the Most High's creatures in the lower places. Remember, Adam was to rule in the lower places. Listen to me, my children, today. In those days, when the Lord came down onto earth for Adam's sake and visited all his creatures, which he created himself, after all these he created Adam, and the Lord called all the beasts of the earth, all the reptiles, and all the birds that soar in the air, and brought them all before the face of our father, Adam. And Adam gave the names to all things living on earth, and the Lord appointed him ruler over all and subjected to him all things under his hands, and made them dumb, and made them dull, that they be commended of men, and be in subjection and obedience to him. When Adam and Eve were removed from the garden, they became subject to the Satans. Because they obeyed the voice of the Satan called Gadriel, who deceived Eve in the garden, they came under the command of the Satan, Satanel. The fallen angels that follow Satanel dwell on earth. Satan and his angels were cast to the earth. After the archangel Michael defeated Satan and his angels in the great war in the heavens, the Messiah said he saw Satan fell like lightning from heaven. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. But God in his mercy drove him from among us to this dark earth, for he had become darkness itself and a worker of unrighteousness. The angels that follow Satan into rebellion are known as demons or fallen angels. They live here on this earth with their leader, Satanel. The scripture said they were cast down to the earth. Some indigenous black people refuse to believe this because some can't see these devils in the flesh. If you can see the other species of mankind, then you have seen the fallen ones and interacted with devils. The scriptures clearly state Satan and his angels were cast out of heaven to the earth. When Adam and Eve transgressed the laws of the garden, they too was brought to the earth and dwell with the fallen angels and the Satan that wanted to be like the Most High. And one from out the order of angels, having turned away with the order that was under him, conceived an impossible thought to place his throne higher than the clouds above the earth, that he might become equal in rank to my power. And I threw him out from the heights with his angels, and he was flying in the air continuously above the bottomless. Yet if thou hadst submitted and had been obedient to me, and have kept my word, thou wouldest be with my angels in my garden. 
But when thou didst transgress and hearken to Satan, thou didst become his guests among his angels that are full of wickedness. And thou camest to this earth that bring forth to thee thorns and thistles. Satan is free to roam this earth. This earth is where he was banished to carry out his purpose until judgment day. Remember, the Most High has vessels made for honor and some for dishonor. In addition, the Most High has many purpose for a trial or event that takes place in his creation. The earth is where Satan dwell with his fallen angels. The scripture said in the book of Peter that Satan roams the earth like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Most people interact with demons on a daily basis. Whenever you operate in the flesh, you are in the mix of devils and in a realm full of demons. The flesh is low vibration. The Satans, demons, unclean spirits, principalities, dark forces, and all spiritual wickedness operate in low vibrations, the flesh. The scriptures made it clear that you cannot please the Most High in the flesh. So then... They that are in the flesh cannot please God. The leader of the fallen ones, Satan now, will not be bound until the Messiah's thousand year reign. Until that appointed time, this Satan has the power and ability to roam this earth and cause trouble all over the world. How did Satan get the power? When Adam and Eve transgressed the laws of the garden, they made a covenant with the fallen one. The dominion Adam once had was given to the Satans. When you read the scriptures in the Apocrypha books, you will see how Adam came under the rule of the Satans until the day of redemption. O oh Adam, look at that garden of joy and at this earth of toil, and behold the angels who are in the garden that is full of them, and see thyself alone on this earth with Satan whom thou didst obey. And he has continued, O Adam, to make war against thee, until he beguiled thee and made thee come out of the garden to this strange land, where all these trials have come to thee. And death, which God brought upon him, he has also brought to thee, O Adam, because thou did obey him and did transgress against God. But now, O Adam, by reason of thy fall, thou art under my rule, and I am king over thee. Because thou hast hearkened to me and hast transgressed against thy God, neither will there be any deliverance from my hands until the day promised thee by thy God. Some Israelites and indigenous black people wonder at all the trials and tribulations that has been upon their lives from the beginning. You just heard the root cause to your troubles that date back to Adam and Eve. In addition to the trials upon the seed of Adam, your sins contribute to your sufferings. Rebellion is a great sin. The scripture said the sin of rebellion is like witchcraft. You cannot have witchcraft without idolatry. The Most High hate the sin of idolatry. Israelites, it is important when you are praying and repenting, make sure that you repent of the sins of your fathers. The consequences of the sins of your fathers travel from generation to generation, like a generational curse. The Lord is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. Today, the rulers of this world has polluted everything. They have renamed places and the animals to cause confusion, as well as to establish themselves as gods on this earth. When you read the books that were removed from the Bible, you will see how the Satan, Satanel, and the angels that follow him are on a quest to destroy Adam and his seed from the face of this earth. He wants to establish himself on this earth as God and to rule with the fallen angels in the human hybrid species that believe his lies. Again, he said, and as much as we do not know the day agreed upon with thee by thy God, nor the hour in which thou shalt be delivered, for that reason will we multiply war and murder upon thee and thy seed after thee. The goal of Satan was to get Adam and Eve to sin in the garden. Once they sinned, he gained control and dominion over the earth. Remember, Satan now wants to be like the Most High. He wanted to place his throne in the heavens like the Most High to rule. Because pride has deceived him, he became an evil spirit of the lower places. 
Israelites, that is why you must elevate to higher levels because in low vibrations, this wicked Satan control all the low vibrating people. The devil is the evil spirit of the lower places. As a fugitive, he made Satona from the heavens as his name was Sentinel. Thus he became different from the angels, but his nature did not change. His intelligence as far as his understanding of righteous and sinful things. From the time Adam and Eve fell in the garden and repented of their sins, the Most High started the process to redeem Adam and his seed. The Most High granted Adam and Eve as well as the righteous of their seed salvation. This covenant transferred throughout Adam and Eve's bloodline. Religion has transformed the Most High's journey to redeem his people into a worldwide religion. The Satans weaponized the salvation the Most High granted Adam and his seed to deceive many in the beast system. The lies being told in the various religious institutions is causing many people to perish. Because too many people fail to seek knowledge for themselves in religion, hell has enlarged itself. Therefore hell hath enlarged herself, and opened her mouth without measure, and their glory, and their multitude, and their pomp, and he that rejoiceth shall descend into it. Once the Satans control your mind and behavior, you have become a member of the kingdom of darkness. When you join the Satans in their quest to rebel against the Most High, you become an enemy to the Most High. You can't love this world. The scripture said, if you love this world, the love of the Father is not in you. Remember, the world do not know the Most High, nor do they serve the Most High. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. What most Israelites and indigenous black people fail to understand, you don't have to establish a verbal covenant with the Satans to be a partaker with them. When you fail to obey your God, you've become a partaker with them. When you fail to take your place, you become a partaker with them. When you remain silent from the lawlessness you're witnessing, you become a partaker with them. Remember, the scripture said if you fail to warn the person about their demise and that person die in their iniquity, their blood is on your hands. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. The workers of iniquity in the beast system has made it seem that when you warn a person about their iniquities, you are judging them. Some people do not want to be labeled with the many terminologies the workers of iniquity have created to shame those who follow the Most High and uphold His statutes and commandments. Many remain silent because they don't want to be labeled. Because they fear the consequences and value what the heathens think of them over the Most High, they become guilty. When you know what the Most High asks of you, yet you choose to do what you want. Remember when the Most High asked Jonah to warn the people of Nineveh? Jonah knew the Most High would forgive those people. Instead of warning them, he chose to flee from the Most High. I don't know how a person can flee from the presence of the Most High. Jonah tried and failed. He was judged and held accountable for his failure to do as the Most High asked of him. When the trials and tribulations became too much for him, he repented and followed the command of the Most High. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord, and went down to Joppa. And he found a ship going to Tarshish, so he paid the fare thereof, and went down into it, to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So Jonah arose, and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days' journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey, and he cried and said, 
Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Israelites, most of you are aware what is required of you. Many of you come up with multiple excuses unto why you can't obey the Most High. There's a rise of blaming the heathens for everything and not looking within and the indigenous black community for your participation in your own demise. Israelites and indigenous black people, when you deliberately disobey the Most High, you become partakers with the heathens. Remember, the Most High knows your heart. You can deceive men, but you cannot deceive the Most High. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Just because our ancestors and Adam and Eve failed at what the Most High commanded them, it doesn't relinquish us from the commandments of the Most High. We are still responsible to do what the Most High required of us, regardless of the heathens and the Satan's abominations on the earth. The reason the wicked are in control, the earth was given, not stolen, but given into the hands of the wicked. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. It covers the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? When you disobey the commands of the Most High, you are giving up your power and authority. You are establishing covenants with devils unknowingly. That is why the earth was given into the hands of the wicked. The hybrid species occupy and control all the lands in this earth. The indigenous black people couldn't control the land they inherited from their fathers because they have lost their way. They chose to serve idols. When the Satans come in the form of the other species of mankind and rob the indigenous black people of everything, including their identity, the Most High gave them into the hands of their enemies because he is no longer your God when you forsake him for idols. The indigenous black people have traded the Most High for the lesser gods of the heathens. The Most High went on to say they have traded their glory. Did you hear? Your glory for the lesser. Hath a nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. What is glory? The dictionary defined glory as high renown of honor won by notable achievements. Another definition is magnificent or great beauty. The Israelites and indigenous black people have traded their glory, the most high for the lesser gods. There is absolutely nothing the Satans can offer you to trade your glory over. Many people have allowed themselves to be deceived with the worthless treasures of this world. In exchange for their glorious glory, the indigenous black people accepted idol gods that oppressed them. Poverty, embarrassment, becoming an astonishment and a bywords among the heathens they live among. A life that has zero value in the beast system. The indigenous black people have traded their glorious glory and remain oppressed and placed at the bottom in the beast culture. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? For what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Because the indigenous black people have failed throughout their generations to obey the Most High, everything the Most High has made subject to them when he gave their father Adam and mother Eve dominion on the earth are oppressed and out of alignment. All of the living creatures of the Most High are suffering under the rule of the Satans through the heathens. The living creatures, such as the plants, the soil, the trees, the sea, as well as the animals that fly in the air, that live in the sea and dwell on the land, will sing for joy when the Most High come to judge the earth. Let the sea roar and the fullness thereof. Let the fields rejoice in all that is therein. Then shall the trees of the wood sing out at the presence of the Lord because he cometh to judge the earth. With the Most High saving the remnant from the wrath of the Satans and will make everything new, all of the Most High's creation that live in the lower places will be delivered as well. Remember, the Most High cursed the ground as punishment against Adam when he sinned. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow 
shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also, and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. Some people, when they read Genesis chapter 3 verse 17, they automatically believe the Most High cursed Adam. However, the Most High cursed the ground. Instead of the ground producing for Adam, it will produce thorns. The ground from which the Most High used to create Adam is living. The ground or the earth was not responsible for Adam's sin, yet it bare the consequences of his sin when the Most High cursed the ground. The ground, as well as all the living creation of the Most High, are suffering for the downfall of the indigenous black people. When the earth groaned, it is petitioning the Most High to be set free from sin. The groaning of the earth is equivalent to the remnant crying out to the Most High. The scripture said the earth and the people groaned together. But we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. Because the earth was given into the hands of the wicked, the indigenous black people have no control in the beast system. The remnant has to cry out to the Most High to save them from the suffering they are enduring for their sins and for the iniquity of their fathers. Our ancestors decided to forsake the Most High. Because of their poor decision, their iniquities has haunted their children throughout their generations. The scriptures reveal how the previous generations lamented about how their fathers have sinned and they bore their iniquities. Our fathers have sinned and are not, and we have borne their iniquities. I have heard Israelites in this generation go on and on about the sins of the fathers. The Most High gave his people instructions on what to do to be saved. Just like the earth had nothing to do with the iniquity of mankind, mankind sin and the most high curse the ground. Therefore, the earth is groaning to be saved. The workers of iniquity are destroying the earth in many ways. The creatures in the sea, the creatures on land, as well as the birds of the air are suffering. The habitat of these creatures are being destroyed. The abominable practices of the heathens against the animals are wicked. Crossbreeding torturing the animals with their biochemical inventions, caging the animals for profit at their zoos. Bestiality is a sin that the heathens and some indigenous black people who love pet culture and full of perversion engage in behind closed doors. Bestiality is a sin that brings death to the animal and the person engaging in the act. And if a man lie with a beast, he shall surely be put to death. And ye shall slay the beast. And if a woman approach unto any beast and lie down there too, thou shalt kill the woman and the beast. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. Bestiality is a sin against the animals. As you can see, all of the earth is suffering during the times of the heathens. When the heathens plant artificial seeds into the ground, as well as spraying harsh chemicals on the vegetation and plants, it destroyed the soil. The organic soil the Most High made perfect is now destroyed with the GMO seeds and the harsh chemicals that cause the seeds to grow at a rapid rate. The wicked practices of the heathens for high profits are destroying the earth. When the heathens destroy the soil, the ground suffer which prevent the ground from producing. The Most High command the ground to produce food for mankind and the animals. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb-bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat. And it was so. The Most High charged the Israelites to work the ground for six years. And on the seventh year, they are to let the ground rest. And six years thou shalt sow thy land, and shalt gather in the fruits thereof. But the seventh year thou shalt let it rest and lie still, that the poor of thy people may eat. And what they leave the beasts of the field shall eat. In like manner thou shalt deal with thy vineyard and with thy olive yard. All of the Most High's creation is supposed to honor the Sabbath rest. 
Because the love of money is great in the beast culture, many do not honor the Most High Sabbath, nor allow the earth to honor the Sabbath. We live in a system that do not follow the commandments of the Most High. The workers of iniquity set their own statutes and laws for the land they have stolen. They ignore the statutes and commandments of the Most High concerning his creation. With the indigenous black people failing to take their place, everything is out of order. The heathens spray the air with toxic chemicals to further destroy the earth. The GMO seeds, as well as the harsh chemicals, contaminates the ground and the crops. The genetically modified crops are sold in the supermarkets. The people who eat those crops are plagued with all sorts of infirmities. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness, and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which thou knowest, upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. A famine takes place when the ground can no longer produce food and the soil is destroyed. Sometimes the Most High use a famine to give the ground the rest that it needs to recover and rid itself of the harsh chemicals and foreign seeds. Remember, the Most High can use a trial for multiple purpose. The Most High can use a famine to judge the wicked nations. The Most High warned Joseph of a seven-year famine. The Most High gave the people in Joseph's generation seven years to prepare for the famine. The famine happened all over the world at that time. The only place that had food was the land of Mizraim in the storehouses Joseph prepared for the seven year of famine. And the seven years of plenteousness that was in the land of Egypt were ended. And the seven years of dearth began to come according as Joseph had said. And the dearth was in all lands, but in all the land of Egypt there was bread. And when all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried to Pharaoh for bread. And Pharaoh said unto all the Egyptians, Go unto Joseph, what he saith to you, do. And the famine was over all the face of the earth. And Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold unto the Egyptians, and the famine waxed sore in the land of Egypt. When all of the Most High's creation is groaning, what do you believe will happen? Prophecies will begin to unfold. The Most High will fulfill everything written to deliver his creatures. The scripture said, in the times of sorrows, there will be famines, earthquakes, wars, and rumors of wars, nations against nations, and pestilence. As the earth grown for deliverance, sorrow will increase. Israelites and indigenous black people, we have arrived at the time of sorrows. The times of sorrows are perilous times, just as the scripture said, in the last days, perilous times will come. This know also, that in the last days, perilous times shall come. The indigenous black people are familiar with hardship because throughout their generations, their adversaries have seek to destroy them from the face of this earth. The people who are privileged in the beast culture do not know anything about oppression, pain, and suffering. When the earth's groaning become more intense during the times of sorrows, those who are privileged in the beast system will lose their minds. Israelites, that is why it is a dangerous time for you. The deranged heathens are already out of control with everything handed to them. Imagine how they will react when the plagues from the times of sorrows increase. That is why you must prepare yourselves for these times. Woe is me, woe is me, who will deliver me in those days? The beginning of sorrows and great mornings, the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars and the powers shall stand in fear, the beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? Behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment. The times of sorrows are full of plagues. The plagues will show up in the form of famines, droughts, earthquakes, heavy floodings, and etc. The heathens call it natural disasters or climate change. Because everything is out of alignment since the time of Adam, when the earth groan and the Most High hear it, judgment comes upon the earth. The Most High will redeem all of his creation. Just as the Most High will purify the remnant, the Most High will make everything new on earth at the appointed time. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, 
and the former shall not be remembered, nor come into mind. Whenever the Israelites cry out, the Most High never respond with peace to their enemies. The Most High intervene in his people's circumstances and destroy the enemy that is oppressing his people. Likewise, when the earth groan, the raging sea will cause tsunamis and heavy flooding. The earth will have wildfires, famines, and droughts. The earth is being destroyed by the demons in the flesh who infiltrated the human population. The time has come for the indigenous black people to rise. It is the duty of the remnant to cry out to the Most High. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him, even into his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations also of the hills moved and were shaken, because he was wroth. The more you cry out, the sooner your deliverance will come. The scriptures say, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. The devil has come down, full of wrath, because he knows that he has but a short time. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Israelites, listen to the scriptures, meditate on the scriptures, allow the Most High to reveal truth to you via his words. No heathen is going to save you. You don't have any allies. The other species of mankind look out for their best interests. It's about time that you look out for your own interests. You don't need allies to bring the judgment of the Most High upon the workers of iniquity destroying the earth in the beast system. Over the last decade, the earth groaning has become intense. Some are saying they have never seen natural disasters like they have seen this year. The signs are pointing to the beginning of the end. Israelites and indigenous black people, join nature with its protests against the hybrid species that have come down with the satans to destroy the earth repent and cry out to the most high to see his kingdom come and his will be done then they cry unto the lord in their trouble and he saved them out of their distresses he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. And let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. 